Sarah, the ship's captain, was a regal and imposing figure, her reptilian features etched with a mixture of awe and trepidation. Her scales shifted subtly from emerald green to deep indigo as she processed the startling changes to her homeworld. This cannot be, she uttered, her voice laced with concern. Our ancestors left a world of simple, indigenous societies. What force has transformed Earth so dramatically in our absence? The other draconians on the bridge fell silent, their reptilian features mirroring Zara's unease. Had another alien race discovered Earth and catalyzed this technological revolution? If so, where were the indigenous humans the Draconians had once lived among and protected? Corin, Zara's second-in-command, stepped forward. He was a towering male, his muscular frame covered in iridescent scales that shimmered like diamonds. We must make contact, determine the fate of the humans. Cloaking systems engaged, we will descend to the surface and observe. With a nod, Zara piloted the scout ship down through the dense atmosphere, its sleek, angular form blending seamlessly with the clouds. As they approached a sprawling metropolis, the Draconians were struck by the sheer scale of the human civilization that had emerged. Skyscrapers of steel and glass pierced the sky, and the streets below teemed with vehicles and crowds of people. Zara guided the ship to a secluded location on the outskirts of the city, cloaking it from view. Corin, you and a small team will infiltrate the city and gather intelligence. I will remain with the ship and continue our scans. Corin and three other Draconians, each capable of shapeshifting into a variety of forms, descended to the ground. Blending seamlessly with the human populace, they moved through the bustling streets, observing the advanced technology and infrastructure with a mixture of awe and trepidation. As they delved deeper into the city, the Draconians encountered stark contrasts. Towering skyscrapers and gleaming corporate headquarters stood in stark juxtaposition with sprawling slums and impoverished neighborhoods. The wealth and prosperity of some seemed to come at the expense of the many. Corin's team eventually made their way to a prestigious university, where they infiltrated the archives and began to piece together the history of Earth's transformation. What they discovered sent shockwaves through the Draconian Collective. It seemed that in the Draconian's absence, a new species had emerged, Homo sapiens, or modern humans, who had rapidly developed advanced technology and established a global civilization. This species had not only survived but thrived and had even ventured into the stars, establishing colonies on other worlds. But the Draconians' most troubling discovery was the fate of the indigenous humans they had once lived among. According to the historical records, these ancient human societies had been decimated, their populations either assimilated or wiped out entirely by the rise of the modern human civilization. Corin and his team returned to the scout ship, their faces etched with a mixture of grief and disbelief. Zara listened intently as they relayed their findings, her reptilian eyes narrowing with concern. So the humans we knew and protected are no more, she murmured, her voice tinged with sorrow, and this new species, these modern humans, have advanced far beyond what we ever imagined. We must tread carefully, for they may view us as a threat or worse, to ask us to fix all the problems of the earth, we must keep a low profile for now. So, the humans we knew and protected are no more, Zara murmured, her voice tinged with sorrow. And this new species, these modern humans, have advanced far beyond what we ever imagined. We must tread carefully, for they may view us as a threat. The Draconians fell silent, their thoughts consumed by the implications of what they had learned. As they prepared to depart, a single question lingered in their minds. Had their long absence from Earth paved the way for this profound transformation, or had another more sinister force been at work? Zara's brow furrowed as she considered their next move. We cannot simply retreat from this world. The humans we once knew may be gone, but we have a responsibility to understand what has become of our ancestral home. Corin nodded solemnly. Agreed. 
We must make contact, but cautiously. These modern humans may not welcome our presence. With a flick of her talons, Zara activated the ship's holographic projector, casting an image of a bustling human city onto the bridge. Then we shall observe them first, learn their ways, before revealing ourselves. Corin, assemble a team of our most skilled shapeshifters. You will infiltrate the city and gather more intelligence. Corin's eyes gleamed with anticipation. It will be done. He turned to the others, issuing a series of commands in the draconian tongue. Within moments, four of the most adept shapeshifters stepped forward, their bodies shimmering as they transformed into human guises. Zara watched as the team descended to the surface, blending seamlessly with the crowds. She knew the risks they faced, for the modern humans had developed advanced technology that could potentially detect even the most skilled draconian shapeshifter. But the need to understand this new world and the fate of their former wards outweighed the dangers. As the scout ship maintained its cloaked vigil over the city, Zara's mind raced with questions. Had the modern humans discovered the existence of other intelligent life in the cosmos? Had they made contact with alien civilizations, just as the Draconians had? They do seem familiar, but from where? I have a vague memory that I had met them before, and what had become of the indigenous cultures the Draconians had once cherished? Hours turned to days as Koran's team delved deeper into the human world, gathering intelligence and sending regular reports back to the ship. The Draconians were both fascinated and disturbed by what they learned. The modern humans had indeed ventured into the stars, establishing colonies on nearby planets and moons, some of which they had pasted by on the way to Earth, but did not look like they had been maintained for some time. Zara wondered if these were the same humans who had visited her homeworld earlier, an encounter with these advanced humans. The leader of them was called Captain Elena Zhao, and didn't think much about it at the time, thinking they were from another seeded planet as the ones they had left behind were so primitive and could not possible have advanced this far in a relatively short amount of time. And they only talked about how technology was advanced, their societies complex and often divided. Wealth and power were concentrated in the hands of a few, while vast swathes of the population lived in poverty and despair. Most troubling of all, the Draconians found no trace of the ancient human cultures they had once known. The indigenous tribes and civilizations had been wiped out, their languages and traditions all but forgotten. In their place, a globalized, industrialized world had emerged, one that seemed to have little regard for the natural world or the sanctity of life, and it was portrayed as something different by the visiting humans to our home world than what I can see in front of me. As Zara digested these revelations, a growing sense of unease settled over her. Had the Draconian's absence truly paved the way for this transformation, or was there some other, more sinister force at work? The thought that another alien civilization might have intervened on Earth filled her with dread. Finally, Corin's team returned to the scout ship, their human disguises melting away to reveal their true draconian forms. The expressions on their faces were grave, their eyes downcast. What have you learned? What of Captain Elena? Was there any trace of her? Zara asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Corin stepped forward, his scales shimmering in the dim light of the bridge. The modern humans have indeed ventured into the stars and are the same humans from forty human years ago. Something has changed. It's nothing like they described to us. They have also turned their gaze inward, engaging in constant conflict and exploitation of their own kind. Their technological advancements have come at a terrible cost. The destruction of the natural world and the subjugation of entire populations Zara's talons clenched into fists, her reptilian eyes narrowing with anger. And what of the indigenous cultures we once knew? Have they truly been wiped from the face of this world? Corin nodded solemnly. I'm afraid so, Captain. Our searches have turned up no trace of the tribes and civilizations we once lived among. 
They have been erased, their legacies buried beneath the weight of this new global order. Zara's scales rippled with a surge of anguish and anger. Then we have failed them. We were entrusted to protect these people, to guide them, and we abandoned them to their fate. She turned away, her talons raking across the smooth surface of the control console. Corin reached out a taloned hand, placing it gently on Zara's shoulder. We cannot blame ourselves. We had no way of knowing the extent to which the world would change in our absence. Now we must decide how to proceed. Zara took a deep, steadying breath, her gaze hardening with resolve. We cannot simply retreat from this world. The modern humans may have forgotten their roots, but we have not. We must find a way to restore balance, to protect what remains of the natural world and the indigenous cultures. But how? Corin asked, his brow furrowing with concern. These humans have developed weapons and technology that could pose a grave threat to us. We cannot simply reveal ourselves and expect them to welcome us with open arms. Zara's eyes narrowed as a plan began to take shape in her mind. We will not reveal ourselves, not yet. Instead, we will work from the shadows, using our shape-shifting abilities to infiltrate their societies and sow the seeds of change. Corin's scales shifted to a thoughtful hue. You propose a covert operation to subtly influence the course of human civilization, to guide them back towards a more harmonious existence with the natural world. Precisely, Zara replied, her voice tinged with a hint of grim determination. We may have failed our original wards, but we will not abandon this world to its fate. The Draconians have a responsibility to the cosmos, to protect the delicate balance of life wherever it takes root. Corin nodded, his eyes gleaming with a newfound purpose. Then let us begin. I will assemble a team of our most skilled operatives, and we will commence our mission to restore the draconian legacy on Earth. As the scout ship lifted off, its cloaked form disappearing into the clouds, Zara gazed out at the sprawling human metropolis below. We are the draconians, the ancient guardians of this world. And we will not rest until we have reclaimed what is rightfully ours. In the shadows of the bustling city, Corin's team began to move, their human guises blending seamlessly with the crowds. They would infiltrate the highest levels of power, sowing the seeds of change and guiding the modern humans towards a more sustainable and harmonious future. But as they delved deeper into the human world, the Draconians would soon discover that the forces they were up against were far more complex and entrenched than they had anticipated. The modern humans had not only forgotten their roots, but had also fallen under the sway of a mysterious, alien influence, one that threatened to unravel the very fabric of Earth's civilization. The draconian mission to restore balance would become a perilous journey, fraught with danger and unexpected challenges. And as they confronted this new threat, the ancient guardians would be forced to confront the ghosts of their own past, and the consequences of their long absence from the world they had once cherished. As the Novarian Collective watched from the shadows, a concerned member approached the leader, High Chancellor Draxon, in the subterranean base headquarters beneath the Earth's capital city. My High Chancellor, have you noticed the new activity of the visitors they call Draconians? The out-of-breath Fryling gasped. Steady yourself, no need to work up a sweat over some mere space dragons. He paused a moment to make sure he had the attention of the Grand Hall. You see, with our reach and numbers alone, they're outmatched, so everyone steady themselves and trust the process. We never reveal our hand until absolutely necessary. Let them think they know us, and allow them to think they have infiltrated our ranks. Then once in position, spring the trap for the Novarian Collective. May we bask in the shadows and never falter. 